Okay. Cool. Welcome everyone. My name is Dr. Emma Shapiro and I'm a physical therapist who loves to interview entrepreneurs and other amazing healthcare professionals who are helping spread the word about alternative careers. I'm here with Tavana is doing so many amazing things. She's super passionate about burnout and talking about burnout, but she also is really starting to inspire a lot of therapists with starting their own wellness practice. And she has a Facebook group PTs, correct? Mm -hmm. The Wellness PT, PT Societies. For Wellness sure. PT Societies. And she also has a website. And so in this webinar, she's going to be sharing sort of her story, how she got started, how she got inspired to do this, as guiding you along the path to potentially become a health coach or a wellness coach yourself. And she'll even be giving you a couple top secret business tips to hopefully help you really this uh, new alternative career. Yes. So Tavana, welcome. Thank you so much for being on my unique webinar <laughs> tonight. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Emma, for having me. I'm so excited. Questions. I love all the questions. Okay. <laughs> well, no I think holds the part, all right. Awesome. And that's what I love about you. You you don't hold back. You're a straight shooter. Um, so I think the first question everyone is interested in is just what to become a wellness physical therapist? So I think it's interesting because a lot of physical therapists enter the field because they had an experience with physical therapy where maybe they played some sport or something and they went and like, oh, this is kind of cool. I love helping people. Well, I didn't have that. I started being a physical therapist because I wanted to be a medical doctor and I had my own health challenges and issues. And I just didn't like that practice model where they had me in the way five minutes. I was in the examination room for like two minutes after I waited 15 more minutes. They wrote a prescription and sent me out on my way. Didn't know if I took the pills and, you know, didn't see if there was side effects or whatever. So I actually found out about physical therapy career fair and watching a video about it. So I didn't have that experience. But as a wellness person, I definitely had that experience. I had a, at one point in time um, really had some help up to 224 pounds. And in the process of losing those 60 pounds, I really began to love movement again for myself and not use it uh, exercise as punishment, not trying to beat my body into men and all of these things. And I really learned to, to just love fitness again. And so that's because I knew that there were other people like me and that I had come out on the other side. I really wanted to share that joy with people. Um, not I'm a physical therapist. This is what you should do because I tell you to, but yeah. I'm on the same side as you and I know what it feels like. So let me just be a beacon of light and a guide really. And what I did was start an alternative fitness. So we're in an alternative careers group. And I started an alternative fitness event company where the whole mission was to bring women together, right? Because women love to be social. They, um, and we wanted them to find out did a workout that didn't involve just running and lifting weights, right? And so then the question is, well, what do you do? And if you drive down the street and you see this uh, aerial yoga studio and you might be like, ooh, what is that? But then the thought, I didn't want to go by myself. Yeah. And if I don't think that I look like the people in the studio, then I'm less likely to go. And so that's how So Fit Ladies got started. And we just created a space for women to do and what evolved from there, because we were just doing the fitness events and all of us know that really probably more more than 75 percent of it is what you put in your mouth. Um, you can't you cannot out diet. So once I got a wellness coach certification, a life coach certification, I shifted my business from that um, local in person model to help women in, in a program called. And that's where it was just like this, either on the phone or um, I use a tool called Zoom to help coach women and help inspire them to really just ditch the diet mentality, the yo, yo all of that. And so that's how I got into wellness coaching. Awesome. Well, I love the brand names. Like you're talking, <laughs> I'm like, oh, so fit. That's a great one. 
oh yeah. man, these are these are great brand names. <laughs> um, um, so I love the fact that the other thing is that you had a story. Um, you know, I'm learning a lot more about business growth and branding. Mm -hmm. And even though those on this webinar, you may be a health professional, you're going to start your own business. You're actually going to be some form of a marketer. And so you're going to have to start to well, brand you're going out your of business really fast. Exactly. And so you're going to have to like brand your business. And so one of the great things that I've been learning is your story because people, people want to be a part of something with another person. And so the more personalized you can be, the more you can relate to that other person, the more they're going to feel comfortable and they're going to be attracted to you versus something else. So for those of you thinking about starting a health coaching business or something else, you know, you can take Tavana's story and uh, replicate that in whatever you're going to um, So my next question for you is why should health professionals or rehab professionals consider focusing on wellness and prevention programs? What do you think is sort of special is so like popular about them right now? Well, I don't, I think to answer the last question first, what's so popular about these programs now is that I think people, the, the general public, uh, are to the fact that our healthcare model is broken and they're tired of just putting pill on top of pill. And then this pill causes something else. So then the doctor writes me a script for this pill. And some of these things cost three, four hundred dollars or more a month in their life. Like, I don't want to do that anymore. I could possibly prevent this or I could do something natural. There are some behavioral changes that I can make and they don't know what to do. And so they're looking at us. So that's one part of your question. The other thing, I think because we had to learn how to rehab a person in school, we're we're taught what normal looks like. And so we have the deep experience, expertise in the scientific knowledge to uh, be the front runners in this and back up what we're talking about, as opposed to, and I always make this analogy, the person that's uh, Instagram rich and famous because they have a six pack and how yeah. did they get the six pack and what um, science and research are they actually standing on? So if you take uh, also a lot of physical therapists and occupational therapists and such, we look at the population, we tend to be fitter individuals. Even if you look at all your providers, nurses, doctors, and put them all in a line. If you have a hundred of each of them, the percentage of us who are going to be um, more active, I'm not even going to talk about BMIs or anything like that, but just more active, we just right so that we can relate from that standpoint. Um, the other reason why I think it's really, really important for us to start thinking about and uh, considering wellness and prevention is because it allows a lot of the headaches that we tend to complain about that lead to burnout. And I'm always going to bring it back to that because that's how I got to this, this place where I am now of reaching back and, help, and helping other therapists start businesses. Some of the complaints are that we don't have autonomy, right? And one of the ways to get autonomy is to have your own business. So when I started my contracting company in 2007, that was a quick and easy way we get autonomy, but it was just me now owning my job of being a physical therapist. And that's great. However, I still believe that physical therapy, especially if you work in rehab or an acute care setting job, the descriptions say, job descriptions say must be able to lift 50 to 100 pounds and we stand up all day. And so any of you all who work in that setting, you already know what it's like. And after two back injuries in a row, rotator cuff tear, all of them that happened at work, I was looking at, and I'm not even 40 years old, right? Been doing it 17 years and said, I'm not going to be able to do this until 60, 65, yeah. right? So there's the, um, and then the autonomy piece. Well, if I said, okay, contracting's one way, but I'm still doing the same work. What is some other way? I don't want to own a clinic. I don't want the overhead of it. And so how can I my skill, my experience, my passion for the human body and for movement. How can I take that and 
and use it for good. And then, of course, where Emma was as, talking about adding your story and about part of the reason why a lot of us are burned out is because we're a lot of us are thinking like, well, why am I even doing this? If we're talking about being in a broken healthcare model and the things that we know that we our own health are not actually what we're doing with our patients or we're just fixing people or patching them up just good enough to kind of get back out there and not even have enough insurance visits to get them to, I feel comfortable going to this activity. A lot of us are just starting to feel disenchanted with that model. And I think going on the prevention and the wellness side of things speaks to all of it. Yeah, no, I think those are all really good points. I think yeah, that, that also I was thinking about as you were talking was the fact that, you know, we've had a lot of great uh, interviews on this webinar system. We have had Aaron Hackett, who was talking about user experience and uh, you, you know, reviewing. And, you know, we've had Meredith come on about sort of general non-clinical careers and all of them involved some sort of learning outside of the clinical care realm, learning something brand new. And that can be but it also could be challenging the fact that you have to learn something all over again with this model with health coaching or wellness coaching you know creating a prevention program for people that's what we do every single day you know we just have to learn how to do the business components run the business components but it's nothing that's novel to us we're 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 uniquely uh skilled to be able to do this and um so i think it's almost a great blend of combining our current and I think a lot of us still are passionate about it, but we want that flexibility. We want that, you know, maybe to be at home a little bit more, to not, like what you said, have to lift. And so it's a blend of getting the, cl uh, the clinical side and helping people, but also having it be just like less intensive on our bodies and on our, our souls. So, um, yeah, I think, I think you hit a lot of yeah. the points as to why. <laughs> yeah, I, I do want and say one thing. So let's be clear. Starting a business of any kind is not easy, but it yeah. doesn't have to be so difficult as we make it out to be. And as some people make it out to be hundred percent, you're right, Emma, that we go in. So it's not like if I left this and I decided to open up a franchise business, that is, has nothing to do with healthcare or physical therapy. Now I've got to learn the delivery. So yeah. if we think, business and we think about marketing, we think about sales, we think about service delivery, we think about admin, we think about customer service. Like one of the biggest pieces once you get the client is delivery of the service. So we already have that piece and then we only have to go out and learn the marketing or sales or partner with someone. Exactly, exactly. And that and that's why I have you on this webinar, right? You're gonna make it easy for me to start my business. <laughs> and in a follow-up webinar going to be talking with a company who then hopefully is going to help with some of that back-end stuff that you talked mm -hmm. about the admin work um uh so my next question is how the heck do you become a therapist you talked about that you got a life coaching certification a wellness certification do we need those certifications mm -hmm. what are your, what are some of the thoughts so this is the the great debate here lately because somewhere around i think it we started to see language from the APTA talking about our changing our scope of practice and asking for, uh, maybe not asking, but saying that physical therapists should have a role in prevention, health, fitness, health promotion. They have all any number of names for it. Um, and what actually happened during that time is if they say it's part of our scope of practice, then we can do it, right? As a physical therapist, licensed without any additional training. However, um, at that, I started So Fit Ladies back in 2012. So this was before the APTA started all of that. So what I tend to split things. So I was a physical therapist during the day. I was a, um, a wellness coach at night. And so if you go, what I always tell people is to go look at your state practice act. That's 
first and read, there's usually a section that says what our scope of practice is and what do they consider it to be in your state where you're licensed and you, you plan on practicing. Okay, so there's that part. Do you need it? it don't if that's part of your practice, your state practice act. Now, what going to get the life coaching certification and the wellness coaching certification did was give me some specific skills that I learned in PT school, like motivational interview. And that's a big buzzword now that we hear. And I never actually knew the term because I was taught that principle. It didn't have that name, but I was taught in coach training. And I have to tell you, even if you decide that you don't, you just want it for your own personal edification, I think it's an amazing thing to go get because it made me such a best because then I, one of the things that I find that physical therapists do when I, when I see some of my colleagues and they're not getting quite the results that they want or similar results that then I get is they're telling the patients what to do doing research papers or stats in front of the patient and thinking that that's supposed to motivate them. And coach training really taught me how to find out what's driving a person's actions and help them make the best decision for themselves. Those are my two cents. So the short answer is no, you don't need it. Read your practice act, co getting a coach certification or not even the certification, just the training, right? Makes you a better therapist. Yeah. And, and, you know, I had a conversation health coaching and and you recently uh did yeah, a, a webinar with them too and they're great and they're actually a, a company a pair of physical therapists and occupational therapists it's a husband and wife combo and mm -hmm. um started a health coaching certification practice where you can get continuing education units and um i was asking him this similar question you know do you need the certification and he said the same thing he said you really don't need the certification change in the future because I think everything is just becoming more and more regulated but you mm -hmm. don't need it right now but he was saying the same thing that you know as physical therapists we're taught the anatomy we're taught the exercise prescription coaching isn't just that it's it's relating to the person it's giving them this unique language to click on what hasn't been working for them you know they're done to you because they've tried the diet they've tried the exercise and it's still not working you know they are they're still in pain or they're still overweight or they still have you know something else going on and so learning this unique like i forget his phrase the mindset like like what you were talking about this language this vocabulary learning to listen that was it learning to listen and by listening he said he was getting so much better results um and so, and so, you know, you don't have to get the certification, but if you're passionate about helping people, it may help you, you know, be a better, better wellness professional. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, just to cut short, we don't need any certifications and um, you can get started like right away. Now, what Correct. was the coaching certification uh, Daphne's asking that you went to for your wellness and for your life coaching? She was asking about Brad's company, which is oh, Catalyst can... Coaching Institute. But the one that I went to was the Life Coach School. It's literally called the Life Coach School. Um, the other that was for the life, the Wellness Coach certification. I think came from the International Weightlifters. What's the other word? Association, I believe. And it is so interesting. I was taking in a CEU course. And at the end of it, that's what I was awarded, a wellness coach certification. Okay. So. And Jean, uh, amazing Jean, uh, popped in and she said, um, uh, a licensed and registered PT who wishes to perform activities that do not require a license, such as Pilates or personal training, may face charges of misconduct for a alleging professional superiority and advertising that is not in the public interest and this was new york's uh state board and so and so that's where 
yeah, that, that's where like what um, Tavana was saying, you really want to look at your state board. And if you have any questions, you really should contact your professional association. You can contact the APTA or you can contact your specific uh, association and they'll, you're welcome Daphna, and they'll have that, they'll help you understand the language. Cause I know the yeah. language can be like, I'm not a lawyer. So um, if you have any questions, I 100% do that because the last thing you wanna do is spend all this time and effort getting everything set only to not have it be appropriate for your state practice act. Mm. Yeah. Well, but then they give you an out when I'm looking at the bottom there. It says such like may choose to make the professional license inactive to avoid confusion. So um, yes, and I'm about yeah. to talk about that, Jean. So I've heard other cases of this about this where um, the, in the, the instance that I have heard of referenced was a RN who was doing some things in terms of health coaching or whatever she was doing in the wellness sector. And, and said some, I guess they might've been New York, who knows, but they said something very similar and she chose to give them back her license or make it inactive in this case. Because I, th so this is just my own personal and I think this is the scary part for a lot of people is that if you're making money, then do you need the license? So mm -hmm. she, in that case, she had built up her practice, her wellness practice to the point, point of sustaining her and her family and her needs and her livelihood. And the license itself was hindering her from helping the people that she wanted to. And there's no way she would have been able to make the income or the impact that she um, by maintaining the, the RN license and going back. So that's the part that that's a personal decision. Once you take the time to read your practice act, maybe you speak with a health law attorney in your state and can help you understand the language, then you have to decide. And, you know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of people out here without licenses doing way better in terms of income and impact than we because they're unshackled. Yeah, and it's it's really unfortunate. I mean, this is my little soapbox, um, mm -hmm. but but you know, it's unfortunate that, like for example, the New York State Board there is almost punishing therapists for help. help. Mm -hmm. You know, we should be growing the PT brand, the PT name, and so they should be empowering us, not not stifling us. Like I actually walked down the street yeah. the other day, and there was a massage. Uh, and they were doing cupping. And so these things, these other professional organizations are not as hindered as us and they're doing similar things. And so I just wish, you know, we have more education, we have knowledge and this skill set. So, but that's my soapbox. I'm gonna step off of it now and let's go on a positive note. Um, <laughs> <laughs> any more questions, you can put them in the comments. Um, okay. 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 So now to like sort of the business growth uh, part, um, the good yeah. stuff. So what would be some of your first tips if someone wanted to start growing a wellness practice? The first thing that I always tell people is you need to be clear about who you're trying to serve and what their problems are. So with that, if you don't already have a pretty good idea, and even if you think you know who that might be and what you might most people, then the next step would be to do some research. And we don't have to get like the research wasn't in the bachelor's program. So I don't know much about it. Right. But I talk about market research and the simplest way to do it is go. If I think you might want to serve and talk to them and find out what their challenges are, what their questions are, what their concerns are, what they've tried in the past that hasn't worked, um, who they follow for about these things. Those are simple things that you can do before you go thinking about giving up your license, before you go uh, building a, a website, before you go registering a name with you're getting a federal tax ID. Like before you do any of that, let's figure out who you're trying to serve and if you even want to do this. 
Yeah, I, I like that answer 100%. Um, you know, you've got to you've got to take the steps. Sorry, Jennifer, the audio is broken up. Okay. Um, well, hopefully, hopefully it should get better soon. Sometimes it's just your connection. Um, no, I think that that's a great idea. Making sure that you know what you want to do, and and then you can start taking the next step. So, say someone has, um, let's say someone wants to do the research. Where should they go if they want to start doing research? Do you recommend social media? Um, what would be your your advice for that? Talk to people. Everybody wants to sit behind their computers on social media. Go talk to people. Now, with this exception, because I had a client to do this the other day because she has engagement on her personal page and she's trying to find more of the people. So she has a little bit of an email list and um, she has more engagement on her page. So yeah, you can go on social media ask people who do they know that fits certain description so that they can connect you, they can refer you so that you can get to the right people. But after that, you should be talking to people like on, on looking at your personal network. I think people fantasize about social media like it's the it's it's this great thing, you know, um, and it's it is a tool. But we forget about that we know, like, and trust us who are more willing to make that connection. So that's mm -hmm. what I would say. Mm -hmm. And okay. Daphna, to answer your question, my personal income as a coach is, is way more now. And so it probably won't be much longer that I continue working um, in contract. Work. <laughs> good, good. Um, okay, so that's a great first step is to do some research. Can I get a second? Uh, well, okay. Once you do the research, then another thing that you might do, okay. So I have a framework that I use with people, and if if it's easier, I'll just quickly share the. the um, the first part, even beyond doing the research, is to understand, redefine your success. Make sure that you understand what does success look like to you. I had a young lady reach out to me the other day and say she wants dollars from her coaching business so that she can pay off her student loans and pay off some other debt and she'll keep doing her w-2 and then once she does that then she'll see and make another uh, decision so be clear about what's that's the first part of the framework the second part of the framework is breaking your barriers so break your barriers means there is going to be some fear that comes up some overwhelm that comes up there are there's a lot of uncertainty because it's not like having um, when we went to PT school or OT or SLP school, they told you the curriculum and you're going to do this, 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 this and this. And even if you line up a bunch of curriculums from different universities, they look slightly different. Um, 100 percent roadmap that anybody can give you. And you've got to figure out how to get past those barriers. A lot of the people that I work with have a job and they also are trying to build a business. So time and energy is a barrier. How do you Oh, make sure you understand that. Okay. The next part of the framework is to own your space. And this is what I talked about. Excuse me, I got an eyelash. Mm -hmm. This is what I talked about in the beginning. Like, make sure you are seen as the special. One of the things that I think we do not do a good job of as physical therapists is specializing. And we know a little bit about a lot of things. And that means we can't really be good at any one. What we see with us compared to medical doctors, right? There's a, a nephrologist at, at the hospital that I'm at who drives, uh, I don't know if it's a Lamborghini. I think it's a Lamborghini, but he had a Ferrari and he just, <laughs> all of these luxury clothes because he's the only one that does what he does. And so one of the other things that we talk about autonomy, we talk about burnout. One of the other issues is we um, are not adding enough value. And if we're specialists, they command things because there's nobody else that can do what we do. Okay. If nobody else can do it, then you or I say because nobody else is doing it. Okay. So let me get off of that soapbox. The next one is work. 
it can be very easy to get caught up in all of the hype that you see around social media about what you should do. And should you be doing video? Should you be doing uh, writing blogs? Should you be having a maybe doing all that? Well, is any of that rooted in your strengths? If you're an introvert and being around a lot of people and engaging all the time is exhausting to you, then that's probably not the best strategy or technique for you. So we want you're building a marketing strategy and you're building a business model that's rooted in your strengths so you don't get burnt out when you have a business and then everything's on you and then you're really screwed okay then also building your base how do you once you do all of this work to find people and let them know what you do how do you stay in touch with them so that they know you're there when they are ready because it's not always on our time sometimes it's on their time another um Important. The framework is packaging your process. So this is another thing that I don't think anybody in healthcare does well um, in terms of packaging your process. And part of it goes back to when we talked earlier about earlier about you interested in serving. What are their problems? This is why the research is so important. What are their problems? What have they tried before all of this? Because I knew in the Rebel Weight Loss Program, I knew they were tired of people telling them what to eat and how to exercise and how much to calories and all of that. And so what were the concerns that they had that they would never lose the weight, that they didn't feel beautiful in the clothes that they had, that they weren't going to buy any new clothes until they were insert whatever weight or size, right? So, so, so clear and specific about the person that I was talking to, then I could create a process or a program to help them that included talk about self-care, that included talk about managing management beating yourself up they talked about how to move your your body in a way um, that feels good to you so that you have more energy how to fuel yourself. so like these kinds of things because it was a process now that also makes things easier because a person wants a result and you're taking them mm -hmm. through a journey so that's packaging your process then all of that to me really comes before you set up shop because you understand okay I I got some traction I know so then that's when we go in and do all of the setup. Um, and I, we, if you were on before we started, I was joking about how I'm non-techie <laughs> or low-techie and I could like a lot of stuff, I can't, can't the computer. So, you know, if I can do it, anybody can. So we- No, Tavon is not giving herself enough credit. You're good, you're good. Oh my goodness, you have no idea how many workarounds <laughs> I have to figure out because I'm like, okay, this is just not working. How it should and how, I'm, how it's supposed to work. So I just come up with a workaround, you know. So now that I am good at, but I'm probably not doing it like it was intended to be done. So I'll just say that. Um. No, I, I love that. I love that framework. I, that that's great, and that was exactly what I was looking for. Was awesome. was that? Yeah, so thank exactly. you so much for 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 sharing us like a yeah. really good framework and a really good model and and to so get it done. That. Yeah. Um, what would you say? you've seen from some of the people you've mentored or from mm. other um, wellness practices? Oh, okay. Well, the, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I see, well, this is having people, is getting a website out the gate. Um, I don't know how, even if you go on Wix and buy, build your own, you are not going to have the language to really be able to speak problems in a way that compels them to reach out to you and talk to you. So I think getting a website from day one is a waste of time and a waste of money. And um, it keeps people from stepping out. So designer, and I have a number of them that I've worked with over the years, they get your deposit and they hold your deposit until you give them the words to put on the website. And then there's like a stalemate because they've got your money and they're waiting on your words and you're telling them you need put on there and they're telling you they're not a business coach. So I've seen that happen time and again. Uh, the other thing is people are not specific enough. They're not it, just to say, okay, you're a health coach. Well, so what, what does that mean? What's in it for me? How does that, you know, okay, I line up a hundred of you. How do I know which one of you to choose if everybody says I'm a health coach? So those would be, I think those are two of the biggest mistakes I see. Yeah, I agree with that. Really, really, um, 
around. Like for example, um, there's this amazing physical therapist who runs the Integrative Women's Health Institute. And mm -hmm. it's all about holistic, integrative women's health. And, and you know exactly what it is, what she's serving, who she's serving. And, but it's also very unique. And like what you were talking about specialization, if you have women's health problems, whether it be, she, you know, she talks about stress, help, um, uh, like, um, you know, bowel, bladder, all sorts of different things, you know, you know, to go to her. And so that's where it really is true. You want to sort of try to narrow down your topic. Um, no, I see Jean's question. So yes. no website. How do people find you, Jean? What did we say we were going to do in the beginning <laughs> is the research. We're going to talk to people. Word of mouth is hands down, because if you have a website, and you're expecting people to come find you now. SEO kind of stuff, but that is a slow. That's a long game. So we want to play the short game and we want to play the long game. So if you want to get clients quickly, like today instead of tomorrow or next from now you're going to talk to people who know like and trust you already because what happens uh how do i link with pt everywhere i'll answer that in just a second so what happens is they're going to talk and then you can just give them a calendar link to get on the phone with you i wouldn't send them directly to because it was a domain link link to scheduling and pay one so you can you can link your domain to a scheduling link and depending on which which software you use, you can put extra language in there so they know what they're signing up for. Um, if you go to lovept.again.com, when I was testing work with burnout, I was point that domain name to a quiz that I created. A quiz is an advanced strategy, so please don't do that. But I'm just saying there is you can point your domain to where you want it to go. And I think that's a really good uh, start in terms of a scheduling or to a survey that you want them to take. Yeah. Does that answer and your I, question, Jean? And I think, I think to go parallel with what you're saying is, is a lot of us are already in the clinic. And so if you have patients that have just like run out of their visits, then you are the perfect next person to go to go to, you know, they've already trust you, you've worked with them. And so when you have to say, Hey, I'm sorry, you know, you've run out of I do have this prevention program or I do have this wellness course or something like that, you know, I think that that's a great opportunity. Now, some people have done that, that I know of, um, but they, you want to, if you're going to do that strategy, talk to a you're cur currently working with and make sure that mm -hmm. they're okay with you um, discussing that with the patient once they've completed their, you know, course of treatment. Um, but, you know, previous patients also working out at the gym up to you could see someone like working out really badly and have like horrible form ah you know and, <laughs> oh, Lord. and you know, go up to them i'm just making up stuff here off the top of my head but go up to them and be like hey you know uh there's different things things you can do besides having a website because you're right seo i've been doing it for two years and i still hardly rank it's it's a tough tough go around mm -hmm. um okay um so i know a lot of people always are concerned about this actually being a lucrative business. You know, I'm pretty sure that we can all get maybe one to two clients or patients, but how do I grow this? How do I make it a consistent and able business? Can it well, be you one? have to do everything <laughs> consistently, right? Yeah. So if you've done the things that I shared in the framework and you are consistent with them and you're tracking T model is if you're testing, tracking, and then tweaking, and you keep going, that's how you gain the consistency. Um, if you are very specific about your niche and pe people talk to her, then you're going to get those referrals. If you have packaged your process in a way, because I think one of the concerns people have from going from a paycheck every two weeks or whenever you get paid to you hatch the fish so you can eat right is how do i predict this right so the consistency comes from the consistent marketing efforts and then also amazing service which i know you all are going to do anyway 
you love it. Um, but the predictable part comes from actually in the beginning when we said read if you redefine success, success or just even define success, if I know that young lady wants thousand dollars a month and we know she has a package that's let's say five hundred dollars for ease of math then we know she needs to sell four of those a month so what marketing efforts do you need to do that gets you to a place where you have four and that's how you predict it because you break down the numbers mm -hmm. um gene was asking could you elaborate on the uh step of setting up the shop yeah set up shop is the part where you actually okay we're hanging up our shin shingle saying we're open for business we're ready to receive clients and cash and it's the part where you make sure you talk to your accountant talk to your attorney do whatever mm -hmm. your business up is and then it's also about setting up the systems in your business so that you're ready to receive the clients and cash so that is your scheduler your payment processor um, how and then it depends on your business model whatever yeah and um you know talking about you were talking a little bit about um you know um you know charging your packages and thinking about you know if your goal is to make two thousand dollars how many packages do you have to sell and that reminded me you got of it, um the conversation that i had with brad actually from catalyst health coaching and he was saying something very similar mm -hmm. how how um what you can do is uniquely design your packages too help get clients in the door so just like a flat you know the packages are five hundred dollars you know what about making that special you know maybe making it that you know it's five hundred dollars if you sign up now and you get an extra bonus or you know you can do a lot of creative things with that um and i think that that can help when you creatively uh price your package i think that can help um, yeah. grow your business well one and i do uh, the exact thing that you just mentioned when people work with me in a simple startup program, you have the program, but the people that sign up right away, what I want, and if we're not starting yet, I want to make sure that they get started and they get some quick wins because exactly. there's a potential for them to get a client to make their um, investment back before we even get started. So I make sure that we do a strategy session and I dive in deep with that. That part that I tell you guys is so important. Own your space and understand that's your specialty is um, niche is another word for specialty make sure that you understand that so that you can go out there and start doing some of the footwork and the research and I have gotten many many clients just from doing research so and that actually brings me to my to my um, next question can you sort of talk about that program that you were just mentioning because I know a lot of people you know it's already we're getting close to an hour and I know oh, people wow. have more questions so you can, can you talk about the program Oh, yeah. So the, the simple startup program is a program that I developed from all the years of mistakes and things that I've made. And then also from helping other coaches start their businesses. And I've taken all of that and put P spin on it and brought it to you guys. So we are looking at all of those things in the framework. We make sure that you know what your niche is. We make sure that you know how to go out and do some research so that you make sure that you're selling what people want to buy. We make sure it rules are and then it also helps us with the pricing so that you know how many of these you need to sell so that if you know you only need four a month it's not as scary as oh i'm trying to make six figures this year so we break we break all of that that i love about it one is the strategy session it's not just a standalone course the all of the modules there are eight of them and the whole point of the program is to launch your wellness business in 60 days we're not trying to drag this out go ahead and get this some people right so they're the eight live sessions we do they're on Tuesdays and then on that Thursday we follow up with Q&A and coaching to make sure that if you didn't understand anything in the module or you're doing your back on it you have me right there so it's not um, you just doing stuff out in the wind like I, I don't know if this has ever happened to you Emma but if you've ever been reading a book and you're like dang I wish I could ask the author this question or even if it's the books with the uh, little chapter and you're like did I do that right so yeah. we want to make sure that not only do you get the lesson but you have some support in actually executing on the lesson um, we have an amazing group of physical therapists who are also practicing 
groups. And, and if you've been in any of these other groups, you know that the way we talk is slightly different than the people who are about um, working in the clinic in a traditional practice model, or even if they're doing a cash-based model, but they're still working in rehab. Or, and or working with patients. So you have you have that benefit there. And I really think that is one of the most beautiful parts of this program is the camaraderie amongst the people in it and just good energy and high vibe. And, and I mean, you've helped me a bunch in, in my business, even though it's not, you know, directly related, related to wellness. Um, yeah. So, so I think, I think I'm really excited for the program. And I think that you're going to do wonders. And I know I've already heard good Thing program. Um, so I know you have like a little special goodie for uh, for the people in the in the um, webinar here and even for those who are getting the recording. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my very favorite things to do is help people find the, their genius, right? So find the intersection between what we do as professionals, what they're passionate about and and who what problem they want to solve. Right. If I think a lot of people are overwhelmed and I, we call it spinning. So they have so many ideas and they don't know how to bring it together and they don't want to leave anything out. And one, one thing I'm really good at is hearing all of these and listening to your energy. And we co-create together uh, what your specialty is, that secret sauce that you have that nobody else has. For example, one of the one of my clients. We DT. And so Emma was talking about those names and I don't know where I come up with them. But sometimes <laughs> I'll just hear them. Right. So uh, that's one of the things that I want to offer. Like if you are really considering this. Better start. You have an idea or you have too many ideas. Right. Um, hop on the call. Let's talk and just see where you are, what you're trying to create, where you might be stuck and see what the next steps are for joining this simple startup program awesome if it's not you know i'm i know a lot of people <laughs> emma knows this right i'm connected to a lot of people so if it's not working with me at least we can get you a little more clear so steps are because again like in coaching it's not about me it's about you and what your next steps are and what you need definitely now if people were interested in your program you said it's a live session is it a live group session or individual group session the live group the okay. strategy sessions are individual that's a deep dive so i get to understand you the person your goals your quirks all of these things and i the thing that i love about that is that when we're doing the modules to say hey gene pay special attention to this part or i'm going to tweak this like i'm going to teach the lesson to everybody but i'm going to pull you aside or may send you a note say hey i want you to do it slightly different because xyz <laughs> um, now another question um so since it's a live group are you going to have continuous enrollments or do people need to like sign up by a specific time point we go we, we go may 7th we go live okay. may 7th so you want to get in there by may 7th i have some openings next tuesday for these discovery sessions if you want if you want in the benefit of that is strategy session in so that when we start and we have the mod you start the modules i have a really really good understanding now i'm going to do the strategy session regardless but i really want if you're going if you're interested don't wait wait the session done okay that's that's good to know that's good to know so what would be the last day for people to sign up for um your program would it be like the sixth since you're starting on the seventh of may uh well until that morning the class okay. is, the class is at noon eastern time okay. so you got until noon eastern time to get your tail in there okay you better <laughs> hurry you better hurry i mean this is something that tavana is launching too not to you know try to put any extra pressure on you guys but probably when people do launches it's usually this is the best time to get access to her because she's launching it she and so it's probably the best price all of that so get in on it um, yeah i'm telling you right now i and I, people say this all the time but i can already tell i'm not going to be able to offer it at this price point again just because there's going to be so much hands-on i'm yeah i'm 
there's a maximum of 20 people. Yeah. I and, cannot and, support more than that. And what I what I really love about this model is exactly what like I want to do to help people too is the live coaching model because I've taken a number of courses. In the course, I've got questions, but then I can't get them answered because it's email only or, yeah. you know, it just seems like they don't, the course people don't really care. And so to actually have a live group, you can get your questions answered. And so like, you're probably gonna be doing live walkthroughs, which is what I always wanna watch is like, how exactly do you do it? And so watching you from like the bottom up grow a practice is, mm -hmm. that's yeah. just huge. Uh, Daphne is asking, yes, the classes, the, the modules where we do the trainings are noons on Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time. Everyone will get the recording so you can listen at your leisure. Um, but then the Q&A. So if you know what the, the topic is and you haven't had a chance to watch the training, feel free to jump in and ask the question. It's OK. Um, any other questions for Tavana while we still have the webinar? Okay. Beautiful. Last That's call. Question. <laughs> Thank you guys for being here and for participating. Yeah. And Jean for throwing those curveballs. I love questions. <laughs> yes, definitely. So if you are interested in Tavana's program, go ahead and click book now. Um, and thank you again, everyone, for being on this webinar. Um, you know, Jean, Daphna, uh, Jacqueline. You guys are all amazing. Sarah, so many people in this webinar. So thank you so much for attending. We really appreciate it. And I'll be sending out the webinar um, recording tomorrow that'll have this link again. So if you want to, you know, think about Tavana and then click on the link, no problem. I'll be sending it out in the email. So look out for my email um, probably tomorrow. Um, and you guys can always reach out to me at alternativehealthcarecareers at gmail.com. And I I don't know you, Tavana. Do you want to offer mm -hmm. your email to? Sure. Tavana at wellnesspts.com. Okay. There you go. I put that link in in case you guys want to, you know, if you have any questions, um, you know, any hesitations about the program or just anything in general. Thank you all so much and uh, have a good evening.